Yes, there is a place in Prague where you can sit right here and have a beer. And we love it. Well, hello there. My name is Yannick, I'm the Honest Guide from Prague, and I was really looking forward to show you this new place we have in our city. It is a regular tram, but a bunch of guys bought it from the public transport and they actually turned it into a pub slash bistro, literally one stop from the Prague castle. So we will show you around, so please come inside, MTV Cripsa style. This tram, T3 type, is still in operation around the world. It is the most popular tram around the world. This specific one was in operation till the last year, and after 1.3 million kilometers, they turned it into this. Uh, they basically only added tables and uh, power outlets and Wi-Fi, so I guess this is more of a co-working space now. Uh, but the cool thing is that it's not like a museum. You can sit and touch on anything. You can even use the buzzer. I guess to call the driver to bring you more beer or something? You think I can call the driver to get us more beers with the buzzer? Okay. But there is one place on a regular tram that you cannot go to. And in this case, you can. And it is also a reason why your kids will love this because this door can open. It's hard to open it, but... Oops, it does open. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your driver speaking. My name is Yannick Rubesh. Uh, we'll be cruising at the altitude of exactly uh, zero feet above the ground, uh, it, but it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So if I was you, I'd hold on to your seat. In the driver's seat, this really gives you a feeling of power, like driving a train. Uh, all these buttons work, like you can use the buzzer so people leave the door, you can use the turn signals. Uh, unfortunately, the, the bell, the main bell is switched off. You can uh, imagine the reason why, but the wipers work uh, and so on. And it is a comfy seat. <laughs> it squeaks, but it's great. If you want to learn more about the history of the Prague transport system, you can go to the museum, or just in this tram you can learn more about it. Uh, the T3 type is the most popular tram around the world. Uh, they have them even in North Korea, all around Europe. Uh, and I rode it a couple weeks ago in Kiev, uh, and it's in much worse shape uh, than uh, we have ours here. We really treasure them. Uh, and you can also uh, see what they have here in the bistro. Uh, they have. Uh, uh, beer on tap, french fries with cheddar, kolache, the traditional Czech, uh, homemade lemonades, and no, they do not have trdelnik here, despite the fact we're 100 meters from the castle. So let's go give it a sample here. The bistro here serves great Czech beer from a local brewery. And uh, if you want to sit inside the tram, you can, but it does get hot in the summer. So obviously you want to get some fresh air on the outdoor seating, uh, staring at the trams. By the way, fun fact, if you come here on a weekend, the historical line 42, the very old tram actually runs right here on this track. So you can sit here, enjoy beer, watch the old tram, watch this old tram. I mean, uh, the world around you will be buzzing. Uh, you can also get some fries uh, from the bistro. They have have them in all kinds, cheese, vegan, of uh, meat. Uh, but if you're really hungry, you can just cross the street and go to the Fat Fuck Smash Burger place that we showed on one of the previous episodes. And that's how we discovered this place. Now, what is this place in general? Like, why are these staircases so huge? Why is there a bridge, an overpass? And why is it not used anymore? There is a cool story here, and it includes the words, the largest in the world. We have moved only 200 meters, a two minute walk to this spot. This is also a tram loop. There's also a tram sitting here, but it's a working, running uh, tram line that has a loop here. And this place is not called Dlabachov, but Kralovka. It's not red, it's blue. But why are there two turnarounds for trams right next to each other? And why is there this huge staircase and the bridges? It almost looks like a lot of people should come here and go somewhere. And yes, that's exactly why they designed these tram stations. They could, uh, within an hour, transport more than 60,000 people only by trams to this place. But where did the 60,000 people go to? Well, let me show you. 
And those 60,000 people an hour from the trams eventually made up to hundreds of thousands that were all coming to this spot, which is the largest stadium in the world, Strahov Stadium. Uh, there were gatherings, uh, sport events, uh, where 250,000 spectators could watch uh, another tens of thousands of athletes perform. Uh, we found a map, a special map from that occasion that shows the blue and the red lines of trams all ending uh, at the tram loops that we showed you. And there's also a green line, which were the trolley buses. Uh, this stadium you will not find in most of the lists of largest stadiums because since 1994 it's been closed. It's only used for uh, football. Uh, there's like eight soccer fields, <laughs> which is kind of impressive. And uh, I've been here once for an event when the Pope visited Prague. My dad brought me here and before that he was here for the Rolling Stones concert. This spot is super unique and I'm more than happy that it popped up here in our city. Not only it's a great place to be at, it's also very, very Instagrammable. I was here for the sunset. You're gonna get some likes out of this. Uh, it's only nine minutes by foot from the Prague Castle and I bet you anything that if you come to Prague, you will go to the Prague Castle. Everyone goes to the Prague Castle, but only a few will discover places like these. We try to discover them for you, so I hope when you'll come to Prague, you'll have a good time and enjoy a beer in a tram. Honest guys, Honza, Janek, see you next week on our channel. In the end, I'm gonna teach you a Czech word related to this tram, and that is how to say a buzzer, because you can buzz inside the tram, and that is bzuchak. Bzuchak is buzzer, bzuchak.